So page number 39, continuing uh, Mangala Sutta bless, the Blessing Discourse. Selfless giving, living the just life, supporting all relatives and ba uh, blameless actions, this is Blessing Supreme. Selfless giving means practicing generosity. Living the just life according to the Dhamma, living according to the Dhamma, applying the Dhamma, respecting the universal law. If someone living, respecting universal law. Supporting all relatives and blameless action. No one can blame the actions, the activities that he is engaging. So then, selfless giving, practicing dhāna, why we should be generous? Why we should practice dhāna? What is the purpose? Why? When we doing something, we have to know the meaning. Why we are doing this? As we mentioned about Noble Late Paul Path, the second steps of Noble Late Paul Path is right uh, concept. Samma Sankarpa. Selfless giving means you, you are developing your Samma Sankarpa. Samma Sankappa divided into three. Nekama Sankappa, Avihinsa Sankappa, Avyapada Sankappa. In the morning, Bhanteji mentioned about it. Nekama Sankappa, abandoning. Abandoning. In here, selfless giving. There is no reasons. No reasons of I am giving these things, hoping something. That is. That is not the way how we should practice. No reason. I am not expecting anything. Just giving it benefits for others. That is the selfless giving. Nekkam Sankappa. After done, there is no any hopes about it. It is done. Done is done. No more. So this is selfless giving. Done. Why we want to practice this generosity to develop that concept? What is that concept? Abandoning. Not to cling. Giving some experience yourself, not to cling. The way how, am I, I mean, uh, when you're practicing, just think about you are giving food to someone. You are giving clothes to someone. So, you have attachment, the wealth that you accumulate, you need it, you like it, that's why you accumulate that wealth. Spending that money, you ready to give food or clothes or something for someone else, benefits for yourself. Now, there is no any clinging, oh, I'm just practicing generosity, I'm helping him, that's it. So this is the way how you reduce your stress. Keeping things, collecting things, your stress is going up. Using all these things, benefits for everybody, you're reducing your stress. That's why we need to practice generosity, to reduce our stress. Reducing stress, there's opportunity to develop awareness and mindfulness. Not only that, when we start to practice generosity as a result of Nekkama Sankappa, you have Avihinsa Sankappa and Avyapada Sankappa. Avihinsa Sankappa and Avyapada Sankappa, you develop four qualities Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upekka. When we start to practice generosity, as a result of 
practicing generosity, you develop metta, karuna, mudita, upekka, loving friendliness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. All these qualities are developing there with, as a result of your generousness. So generousness means you are gaining these qualities, these four qualities. Dear friends, if you are talking about human beings, there should be these four qualities. Without these four qualities, how we can recognize human beings? Attaining enlightenment means someone who established these qualities. That person does not change his mind because he does not have any defilements. So he can stay with the love independence thoughts without changing. Whatever the things happening, it doesn't matter. His compassion is unshakable. His sympathetic joy is unshakable. Equanimity is unshakable because no defilements in his mind. So it's come through the maximum level. We can come to that maximum level through our practice. So starting with the generousness. That's why we have to practice it, to reduce our stress. As a result of reducing our stress, we can increase our concentration, uh, mindfulness. Through the mindfulness, we can increase concentration. When we have concentration, then we have wisdom too. Wisdom and concentration gaining together. Gaining together. So, now you can see selfless giving why we want to practice dana to reduce stress and increase other qualities along with mindfulness and concentration so that is the meaning living the just life means respecting the natural law respecting natural law means you abstain from killing you abstain him from stealing. You abstain him from sexual misconduct. You abstain him from lying. You abstain him from intoxicants, likewise drugs and alcohol. Why? You respect the natural law. According to natural law, all living beings like to live. No one willing to get any hurts from anyone. If someone bothering, if someone disturbing you, you don't like it. In Dhammapada it says, Attanang Upamankatta Nahaneya Nagatai. Take you as example. Think about others. What you don't like to get from others, they also don't like to get from you. You don't like to get any disturbs from anyone. So they also don't like. So killing or hurting, no one accepting. No one willing to get any kind of disturbs from others. So same as you. Attanangvumangatta. Take you as an example. What you don't like, they also don't like it. So that is the way how we can respect the natural law. This is natural law. Whatever explanations there are in the law book, it doesn't matter. In simple way, you can see through their feelings, through their feelings, how they react, the way how they think about it. How they, how not they actually, how you feel it. That's the best things. Get into not get into their shoes, get, in, get into your shoes, uh, stay with your feelings, then you can recognize the wall. That's why the Buddha explained in Loka Sutta, Sutta name Loka, he must be Bhyamate Kalebare Lokancha, Loka Samudhyancha, Loka Nirodhancha, Loka Nirodhagami, Patipadancha Panyapi. Origin of the world, cessations of the world, cause of the suffering, all these things using just body, I would like to say, the Buddha said in Loka Sutta. It means 
get get into their feelings through our experience we can recognize we can recognize their thoughts their ideas their feelings when we able to connect with the when we open our mind with our feelings open your mind i don't like if someone blaming in unnecessary way if someone disturbing i don't like if someone hurting i don't like if someone try to kill me i don't like same as you others don't like any of this so respect the natural law why the buddha said yati sang apate vejan tadi sang harate pala what we show that's the thing that you have to read so the you have to pay for it if you are doing something you have to pay for it newton also had the theory newton theory third theory says every action has a reaction similar not he is regarding about uh, materials the buddha said every volitional action has a reaction volitional action has a reaction therefore we have to respect the natural law the natural law means we have to observe at least five precepts in minimum level five precepts not to kill not to steal not to adultery not to lie not to use drugs and alcohol this is the way how we can respect the natural law some people believe these five precepts only for buddhists no the buddha did not introduce five precepts buddha went beyond that there were this tradition buddha accepted buddha appreciated so therefore sometimes i have seen some people when we giving uh, helping others to observe precepts uh, some people are not ready to observe because they they have a thought they have a idea oh when i observe five precepts i i might become buddhist no when you observe five precepts you might become a good human beings not not buddhist why you ready to respect the natural law you ready to live according to natural law respecting natural law it does means a living the just life supporting all relatives supporting all relatives. that the previous one was talking about the your family now in this one is talking about relatives next to you next to your parents next to your husband or wife then relatives are there we when we able to help them we have to help them we have to uh, take care of them there's a we have to support the relatives why it is opportunity to practice generosity it is opp- opportunity to practice generosity so therefore we have to support our relatives if they are need if they are willing to get some support from us if they are need needy people we have to help them that is our i mean that is very helpful for our practice to develop our generousness to develop our wholesome thoughts so and blameless actions blameless actions in karaniya metta sutta there's another word in pali nachakuttan samachare kinchi yena vinyu pare upavadeyu even tiny minor small things which are not appreciated by the wise people don't do it that is the explanation in karaniya metta sutta but in here it directly says blameless action none of can blame to you because of your activities you have to have that kind of actions in your life whatever you are telling whatever you are doing it should be blameless from anyone else anyone else i mean there are some people who are wicked they can blame for you anything 
not about them. This is particularly about wise people who can think deeply, widely. If they are blaming, then it is a questionable thing. If we can live without their blame, that is wonderful blessings for us. So, therefore, we have to apply actions which is blameless, which should be blameless. Next one. To cease and abstain from evil, complete restraint from intoxicants, to be diligent in virtuous practice, this is blessings. Arati virati papa, to cease and abstain from evil. What are the evil things? What are the evil? What kind of things are evil? Wicked things. Always create unhappy thoughts. Always develop our stress. Those are the evil things. It might be coming from as words. It might be you can see as actions. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Evil. The nature of evil is polluting your mind. Anger arising. Jealous arising. Hatred. And killing thoughts. All these unnecessary, unwholesome thoughts would be there because of that evil things. Therefore, we have to pay attention. We have to determine ourselves not to increase our evil not to increase our evil. so we have to we have to abstain from evil we, we can't abstain without uh, observing it we have to observe it then to uh, uh, avoid all the evil actions evil thoughts thoughts are dangerous in the persistence of Dhammapada, it says, Mano Bhubhangama Dhamma Mano Setta Mano Maya. The mind is the leader of all and each of activities. So if, if you are doing or telling something with the wicked mind, the results would be bad. Results would be painful. So same, uh, uh, it, it, it's explained, the power of your mind. So therefore, evil mind is not helpful to live happily, peacefully. So we are willing to be happy. We are always concerning about our happiness. We are working on that. Each and every action at the end, we are willing to be happy. So therefore, to take care of happiness, to develop our happiness, uh, we have to away from evil things, evil thoughts and evil deeds. Complete restraint from intoxicants. Intoxicants, the particularly in here, majja, pamacha, sanyamo. Directly we know drugs and alcohol. These are the intoxicants. Drugs and alcohol, these are famous things. Not only these, there are so many. So many. Nowadays we can see people are addicted to cell phone, gambling, computer games. <coughs> All these are intoxicants, intoxicants, driving in the wrong direction. You waste in your time, you don't know. You waste in your time, you don't know. You waste in your energy, you don't know. That's the nature of in intoxicants. I think those intoxicants are danger than drugs and alcohol. Sometimes person who is using drugs and alcohol, they might, they might be able to recover. But it is not easy to recover from those kind of addictions. They need a rehabilitation program years and years in their life to come to their normal life. All these are intoxicants. So therefore, we have to tame, we have to tame, we have to observe all the time what is happening here, what is going on here, 
it means kind of mindfulness is, should be there. So, uh, complete restraint from intoxicants because intoxicants not helping us to maintain peaceful, happy life, particularly relaxed life. If there is any kind of intoxicants are not supportive us to practice our spirituality, to develop our spirituality, develop our insight. To be diligent in virtuous and practi practices. When we started to practice Dhamma, we are not supposed to lose any opportunity. We have to take each and every moment as a support for our spiritual development or basically to practice Dhamma. Practice Dhamma means living according to respecting the natural law. Living according to the natural law. That is practicing Dhamma means. Without developing our hatred, without developing our desire, without developing our any kind of unwholesome thoughts. That is the meaning of practicing Dhamma. We have to take each and every opportunity without losing our energy, effort in practice Dhamma. This is blessed supreme. To be reverent and humble, content and grateful, to hear the Dhamma at the right time, this is blessing supreme. To be reverent and humble, Garavocha Nivatocha. There are people who we are supposed to respect, we have to respect them. And content and grateful, this, this another quality, contentment is very important quality that we should develop. Contentment is one of greatest things. Arogya paramalaba viswasa paramanyati nibba santutti paraman dhanam nibbanam paraman sukhang in Dhammapada it says contentment is greatest happiness that we can reach, that we that we can develop. Santutti paraman dhanam the greatest wealth that we can gain is contentment. Why? Desire, regarding desire, numerous thoughts are arising in our mind, uncountable thoughts arising in our mind regarding desire. Only desire can appear in our mind 108 ways, 108 ways only desire can appear in our mind. So regarding that uh, thoughts, uncountable thoughts would be there regarding desire. So therefore, in this short time period, the length that we can live is very short. We think uh, oh, 80 years, uh, 75 years, 90 years, 100 years is long, no? Comparing with other worlds in the re in these realms, it's very short. So, this short time period, we are not able to fulfill all these desires. Just we are wasting time. If we are trying to fulfill all these desires in this short time period, it's not happening because desire doesn't have limits. Thought doesn't have limits. So many thoughts arising in our mind. Therefore, we have to develop that quality contentment. Contentment, we have to develop that quality. And grateful, we have to appreciate all the time what we receive. Each and every month. These are very helpful for us to keep our happiness, continue our happiness. Things that you can have 
are smaller than the thing that you already lose. So many ideas, thoughts, plans, they are work. We are not able to fulfill any of these things, but very short, limited things that we gain in our life. Thinking of these losing things, always our stress and anxiety going up, but enjoying the things that you already receive, achieve, you can be happy. You can be happy. Why you want to worry, upset about the things that you lose? There is no reason. You can't get back those things anyway. So therefore, stay in this moment. Being mindful, stay in this moment. Enjoy the things that you have. Contentment and gratefulness is very important for that. These are very, very good quality. To hear the Dhamma at the right time. Listening to Dhamma is one of the wonderful opportunity for us to liberate. Listening to Dhamma. Listening to Dhamma means you are you are gathering some information as well as you, you there is opportunity to analyze those uh, explanations to realize the meaning of life. Meaning of life. Dhamma is not something, it is the nature. So therefore, we have to hear the Dhamma at the right time. Right time means the time that you need. You have desire to recognize, to understand, to, re to realize it. So at that time, if you can hear the Dhamma, that is the right time. That is the ti right time. So in this very life, we are we know we are suffering in this birth and death circle. We, we know now we have a human life, we don't know about next life, how would be our next life. So this is the right time because we can hear Dhamma, our ears are clear, we have a brain that words can recognize, we have ability to analyze, we have mind powerful to think deeply and widely. Now we are in right time to listen to Dhamma. Just in case if we are dead, deaf, we are not able to listen to anything. Just in case if we are living as a kind of weak people, uh, special needs weak people, we may not be able to listen and analyze and realize the Dhamma. So now right time. So we have to use this right time to listen to Dhamma. Discuss Dhamma, practice Dhamma. It is great, great blessings. To be patient and obedient, the scene of recluses, to discuss the Dhamma at the right time, this is blessing supreme. To be patient and obedient, we know these are qualities, even we can experience even any kind of life. If we are patient, as well as we are obedient, how would be the results, the benefits that you can experience being an obedient, patient person? We don't want to wait for that to get some explanation from others. Then what about scene of recluses? The scene of recluses means already they, uh, they, they are completely focused on their practice. They are heading to uh, renounce the worldly things. They already renounce the lay life. Renouncing lay life, maintaining a goal to attain enlightenment. This is the recluse's means in here. So it is an example for us. It is an example for us. We need some support. If we can see someone as example, it is a big support for us in our practice. So therefore, that's why it's blessings to see recluses. And to discuss the Dhamma at the right time. Right time means, as I mentioned, this is good time to discuss. We can hear well, we can understand, comprehend well. So, this human life is the wonderful place and right place, right time 
to discuss them. So this is blessing supreme. To live austerely and purely, to see the noble truth and to realize the Nibbana, this is blessing supreme. So, as I mentioned before, we have to develop the quality name Tapo, austerely and purely. Why? Tame in our ear, nose, tongue, all these faculties, controlling those bases, faculties, to fulfill our duty and responsibility. That's why we have to control our ear, nose, tongue, all these faculties to fulfill our duties, responsibility. Why we born to this world? We did not born to this world just to eat and sleep. In the Indian literature, it says, there are few things common for all living beings. Uh, what are the four things? Mm. Ahar nidra bhai mai tunancha samanye tat pasubhi narana. Ahar nidra, we all are eating. Human beings as well as animals. Ahar nidra, we all are sleep. We all are sleeping. Humans and non human, they are sleeping. Animals are sleeping too. Ahar nidra. By fear, we all are having fear. We all are having fear, humans and animals. And Ahar Nidra by Maitunancha. Maitunancha means the sexual activities. Human beings as well as animals, they have sexual activities. Sama Nimetat Pasubi Narana. Humans and non humans, likewise animals are similar with these four activities. These desires are there with humans and animals. There's no difference. There's no difference with these. Then, human beings have a culture. Eating is not similar to other living beings. Animals, particularly, just think about the dog, always living with us, with human beings. When we put something to eat to dog, the way how we put, he has to eat it. But as human beings, when we pound something to eat, there is a procedure for that. There is a procedure for that. Taking apple from the tree, going into dining table using knife and fork washing and cleaning taking a plate sharing with others these are the activities that we have which we call culture this is the culture human culture but animals doesn't have any culture Whatever is there, they have to eat it. So that's why we have table manners. We have table manners. They don't have table manners. Why? This is the way how we should tame. This is the way how we should control our behavior. This is the way how we practice. We all always living with norms, values, taboos, law and order. We have to respect all these things. Why? Benefits for all living beings. For your happiness, for your comforts, we have to apply all these norms, values, taboos and law and order. For your comforts as well as others. For your happiness as well as others. So, that's why patience and obedience, these qualities we need to develop. And scene of recluse, rec, uh, sorry, 
that's why we live austerely and purely to see the noble truths final goal we have final goal to see the noble truths four noble truths to see the four noble truths you have to develop your mindfulness to develop your mindfulness you are taming your word and actions you are controlling your behavior culture norm values taboos law and order all these are helping us to live happily with the uh, respect in the natural law respect in the natural law i don't say all these mundane law and orders are based on natural law but basically in this uh, society killing is prohibited killing is wrong stealing is wrong adultery is wrong lying is wrong using drugs and alcohol is wrong these five things are basically around the world each and every civilized society is not accept very simple it means all law and orders based on these five things so the all these five things are the reasons to have taboos norms values all these things also so this is the way how we can uh live austerely and purely this means our words our actions based on these things and always trying to do useful things and always we try to use our basis benefits for ourselves and others this is the meaning of them and to see the noble truth that is our final goal and to realize the nibbana so as we know to realizations of nibbana we need to develop sati samadhi panya that is the noble eight pole path sati means concentrate uh, mindfulness samadhi means concentration panya means wisdom <coughs> these are the three gains that we should gain through our applying noble eight pole path so this is great blessings the greatest blessings that we can achieve that is our main goal a mind unshaken when touched by the world states sorrowless stainless and secure this is the blessing supreme a mind unshaken why we are worry because our mind is shaken when mind is shaken then we are worry our stress is going up but the person who taming and taming and developing and developing when he was he is able to establish his mind uh, eliminate in all the defilements then he can have a unshakable mind that mind is established firm no reasons to lose the mindfulness mindfulness is there because no any effect of unwholesome thoughts or defilements completely eliminated defilements that kind of unshakable unshaken mind is our goal to establish to develop so when touched by the world states when world states means gain and losing these are the world states whatever happening those things are not bothering us when we develop our mind into this level unshaken level then we don't have sorrow stainless and secure our mind is secure nothing happen into our mind because our mind established with our mindfulness this is the blessing supreme those who have fulfill all these are everywhere invisible they find well being everywhere there is the blessing supreme eta disani khatvana sabbatta aparajita 
sabbat sotting gacanti tante sammangal uttamanti those who have fulfilled all these as we discussed there are 38 factors in this particular sutta that we should apply our day to day life whoever able to apply these factors into their day to day life definitely it doesn't matter where you are living what kind of human beings are you it doesn't matter you can see the results yourself they find well being everywhere there is blessing supreme you can get rid of sansaric suffering you can attain enlightenment so this sutta is explaining what is noble eight pole path in different ways completely all these things regarding noble eight pole path the way how you can develop your right vision right view the way how you can develop your right thoughts or right intention the way how you should live according to samma jeeva samma jeeva mean uh, unwholesome uh, away from unwholesome lifestyle and wholesome lifestyle and the way how you can establish your uh, con- uh, mindfulness the way how you can develop your concentration the way how you can gain your wisdom all these explanations are here in this particular sutta mangala sutta blessings this cause okay so this discourse is not just to listen this discourse is to apply our day to day life applying these factors in our life we can see the results no one is don't wait get support from the deities to protect you you will protect yourself if you apply these things to your day to day life we don't know to depend on uh, other powers unseen powers to protect us uh, if we apply these things to our day to day life so this is the blessings discourse okay thank you very much let's go for the questions